Every year, the world produces more than 108 million cubic meters of particle board, recycling nearly 16 million tons of wood waste that might otherwise rot in landfills or go up in smoke. But this isn't just about producing a material, it's about redefining waste, breathing life back into discarded wood, and fueling a recycling revolution. From broken pallets and sawmill scraps to old furniture, all of it is reborn into the sturdy boards that make up your cabinets, tables, and shelves. And here's something you might not know. Already, a quarter of global particle board production carries eco-certification, marking it as environmentally friendly. Today, we're pulling back the curtain on this industrial marvel. It starts in the raw material yard, where towering piles of waste wood stretch into the sky. Contrary to popular belief, particle board production doesn't rely on high-quality timber. Instead, the philosophy is clear. Waste becomes resource. Low-grade logs unfit for lumber, slabs, shavings, sawdust, even old crates and furniture. All of it is welcomed here. But before the transformation can begin, impurities must go. Metal detectors rip out nails, bolts, and staples with magnetic force. Screening systems sift out sand, stones, and grit. Even bark is stripped away from logs, as it weakens bonding and disrupts surface quality. From here, the wood begins its metamorphosis. On a conveyor belt stretching hundreds of feet, it's carried into a monstrous chipper. Imagine a machine the size of a small room, its giant disc fitted with blades spinning thousands of times per minute. With a roar that shakes the floor, it devours logs and spits out uniform chips. But they're not ready yet. Too coarse, too irregular. They must be refined. Secondary grinding in flakers shaves them down to precision particles. The outer layers demand ultra-thin flakes for smoothness, while the core requires thicker chips to create strength and rigidity. This engineering of particle geometry is what gives the board its balance. Beauty on the outside, muscle on the inside. Moisture, though, is the enemy. Chips enter colossal drum dryers, blasted with hot air until their water content is reduced to just 2-6%. Anything more, and steam explosions would rupture the boards. Anything less, and the glue won't hold. Once dried and sorted by size, it's time for the secret ingredient, resin. Sprayed in a fine mist, synthetic binders like urea formaldehyde coat, each particle. Additives may follow for fire resistance or durability. This sticky mixture is then spread into layers by a forming machine. A bottom of fine flakes, a middle of thick ones, and a top that mirrors the bottom. A perfect three-layer sandwich. Now comes the moment of truth. Pressing. First, a pre-press compacts the mat, squeezing out air. Then it's transferred into a hot press, either a massive multi-opening beast or a continuous belt system. Inside, the mat is crushed under pressures of tens of kilograms per square centimeter, while heated plates reach 400 degrees Fahrenheit. In mere minutes, resin polymerizes, turning liquid glue into rock-solid bonds. The result? A single seamless particle board. But it's not ready yet. Still hot and stressed, the boards cool slowly in giant fan towers. Only once stabilized do they pass through sanding machines, achieving precise thickness and a flawless surface. Cut to size, inspected, tested, and certified, they're ready for their second life as furniture flooring and beyond. From trash to treasure, particle board is proof of how waste can be reimagined. But particle board is only the beginning. Every year, 30 million tons of bamboo are harvested globally. This grass, yes grass, outpaces any tree in growth speed, drinks in carbon dioxide faster than entire forests, and regenerates without replanting. What's hidden inside its fibers allows bamboo to become both harder than oak and softer than silk. On vast plantations, workers harvest towering 60-foot stalks weighing more than 100 pounds. After cutting, they're split, stripped, and boiled to wash away starches and sugars that attract insects. Dried in kilns to the perfect moisture level, the stalks are reborn. Some become flooring, planks pressed into dense blocks so strong they score over 5,000 on the Janka hardness scale, triple the strength of oak. Others undergo strand-woven processing, shredded into fibers, mixed with resin, and compressed into blocks harder than most hardwoods. And yet, bamboo also transforms into softness. Through a chemical process, its fibers are spun into viscose, creating fabrics that are silky, breathable, hypoallergenic, and antibacterial. From cutting boards to scaffolding strong enough to support concrete, from luxury car interiors to eco-friendly clothing, bamboo is the gold of the modern world. 
a renewable, sustainable, and versatile answer to industries that demand both strength and softness. Then there's plywood, over 100 million cubic meters of it produced annually. It begins with forest giants, oaks, pines, poplars rolled into factories still damp with sap. They're washed, steamed at 220 degrees Fahrenheit for hours, and softened until their fibers relax. Then comes the peeling. Logs spun like giant spindles, while knives slice off ribbons of veneer, thin as paper yet strong as steel. These sheets, dried, grated, and coated in glue, are stacked crosswise and pressed under 250 psi, at 300 degrees Fahrenheit. In minutes they fuse into monolithic sheets, sanded smooth, cut to standard sizes, stamped and shipped. Plywood is everywhere, floors, walls, roofs, furniture. It carries homes, stages, schools and trucks on its layered shoulders, whispering the strength of wood reimagined. And what about the giants behind the power grid? Massive steel cable spools, some weighing over 20 tons and measuring 33 feet across. Every single year, more than a billion brand new tires hit the roads around the world, and just as many reach the end of their journey, piling up in landfills and tire cemeteries. In the US alone, over 250 million tires are recycled annually, saving the planet from mountains of waste. But have you ever wondered what really happens to those black rings of rubber that carried cars across thousands of miles? They don't simply vanish, they're torn apart, melted down, and ground up, only to be reborn into something far more extraordinary. And here's the twist, you probably walk on their second life every single day without even realizing it. Stick with me until the end, because I'll reveal a secret that will forever change the way you look at an ordinary tire. Our journey begins in a tire graveyard, acres of land covered in mountains of discarded rubber. These tires may look abandoned, but their story is far from over. This is where the brutal yet ingenious process of recycling begins. A massive industrial shredder, imagine a steel Tyrannosaurus, devours entire tires with terrifying force. Its enormous rotating shafts, armed with steel hooks, rip the tires into palm-sized chunks. As this chaos unfolds, something important is released. Steel cords. Every tire hides a skeleton of steel wires, and as the shredder tears rubber apart, these cords break free like shiny metallic webs. But rubber and steel must part ways. Enter the giant magnet. Suspended above the conveyor, it pulls steel cords away from the shredded mix with a deafening screech. The separated steel is sent for remelting, while the rubber continues onward. Still too coarse, the pieces enter a granulator, a coffee grinder the size of a car. Here, sharp blades grind them down to fingernail-sized granules. During this step, another hidden ingredient emerges, textile fibers. Nylon and polyester strands once added for tire strength are blown away with streams of powerful air, leaving only clean, heavy granules behind. The rubber isn't done yet. It passes through cracker mills, where enormous steel rollers crush and grind it down further, producing fine uniform particles, known as rubber crumb. This crumb looks like black sand or caviar, each grain only a few millimeters wide, packed into one-ton bags. This material is now ready for its rebirth, and its destination might surprise you. At a stadium construction site, workers roll out vast carpets of artificial turf, but the grass blades lie limp and lifeless, until the secret ingredient arrives. A machine spreads layers of quartz sand to stabilize the turf, followed by a blanket of black rubber crumb. These billions of tiny particles fill the space between blades, holding them upright and creating a cushioned layer beneath athletes' feet. The result, every sprint, jump and fall is absorbed by microscopic trampolines, protecting joints and preventing injuries. A final combing process fluffs the field to perfection, leaving a green expanse ready for play. What looks like ordinary grass is actually a hidden monument to recycling, made possible by mountains of old tires. Here's the staggering part. Building one football or soccer field requires 20,000 to 40,000 tires. Across the U.S., over 13,000 artificial turf fields now exist, meaning more than 260 million tires have already found new life beneath athletes' feet. That's nearly an entire year's supply of discarded tires, transformed into something useful, and the benefits go beyond waste reduction. Artificial turf fields save up to a million gallons of water per year compared to natural grass, while eliminating the need for fertilizers, pesticides, and constant mowing. 
But recycling doesn't stop with tires. In another corner of industry, a material stronger than steel and immune to rust is quietly revolutionizing construction, fiberglass rebar. Every year, billions are spent repairing rust-damaged infrastructure, like bridges and parking garages. Steel corrodes, but fiberglass doesn't even acknowledge rust's existence. It's twice as strong as steel, four times lighter, and increasingly in demand. The process begins with thousands of glass filaments, thinner than human hair, stretched from massive bobbins into one thick bundle. This bundle is immersed in sticky polymer resin, polyester vinyl, or epoxy, infused with hardeners and additives. Then it's drawn through a heated steel dye, compressed and shaped into a perfect rod. While still soft, resin-soaked threads are wound spirally around the rod, creating the ribbed texture that grips concrete. Sometimes quartz sand is added for even more bite. Next, the rods enter a curing tunnel, essentially a high-temperature furnace. Inside, the resin hardens into an unbreakable composite, binding millions of glass fibers into one indestructible structure. At the end of the line, pulling devices clamp and drag the rods forward at a steady pace until they reach the cutting saw, where they're trimmed into 20 or 40-foot sections. Still warm, they're bundled and sent off to replace rust-prone steel in construction projects worldwide. What makes fiberglass rebar revolutionary? Weight, strength, and durability. Being four times lighter than steel slashes transport costs, workers can carry bundles by hand, no cranes required. Despite being lighter, it's twice as strong in tension, allowing for thinner reinforcements without sacrificing performance. And its biggest advantage, it doesn't rust. While steel-reinforced concrete may last 50 years before corrosion takes its toll, fiberglass structures can last over a century with minimal maintenance. This material is already shaking up the global market, which grows 10-12% every year. Engineers are now looking at traditional steel and saying we can do better. The future of construction may very well belong to composites like fiberglass. Every year, more than 9 million tons of copper scrap are recycled worldwide. That's enough to build 1,800 statues of liberty. But here's the question. Where do those old cables, transformers, and wires actually go? And how do factories, where temperatures soar past 2,000 degrees Fahrenheit, transform discarded scrap into the lifeblood of modern civilization? Stay with this story until the end, because you'll discover a secret about copper recycling that almost no one knows. The journey begins in the vast warehouses of recycling plants. Piles of copper scrap arrive, industrial power cables, as thick as your arm lying side by side with fragile household wires, chunks of old transformers stacked next to the remains of construction wiring. Each piece has lived a different life, but now they all share one purpose, rebirth. 